Hi, welcome to Digital Tools for the 21st Century. I am your presenter, Sarah Stewart. Let's go ahead and get started. To start, let's take a quick look at the Washoe County School District's 21st Century Learning Competencies. These competencies include the skills of collaboration, knowledge construction, real-world problem-solving and innovation, use of technology for learning, self-regulation, and skilled communication. The most important thing to remember is that these are a key part of the instructional design process. So as you're planning your lessons, keeping this framework in mind will allow you to evaluate when and if the design of your lesson could be altered or adapted to offer the students more opportunity to develop these 21st century competencies. Doing so results in student-centered learning environments. The tools and resources that we're going to explore during this presentation alone cannot help you move up this matrix. This is why planning and lesson design is so paramount to this process. For a closer look at this framework, visit the Washoe County School District 21st Century Learning website at wcsd21.com. This framework was adapted from the Microsoft Innovative Learning Research, which is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Licensing. Digital writing tools and reading tools, like we will look at today, are a good match for two specific 21st century competencies. The first, use of technology for learning and the second knowledge construction. We're going to take a closer look at these two, two dimensions and talk about how lessons can be designed to include these elements, allowing you to maximize these opportunities for students to develop their skills in these areas. Again, you'll notice that as you move up the matrix, this represents more opportunities for students to develop 21st century competencies. So looking more closely at the use of technology for learning, this involves students using technology for learning, so the key word being for, when they directly complete all or part of their activity using technology. And the key point here is that the students can control the technology themselves. So the students are using the technology, not the teacher. It's student-centered. Many of the technology tools that we're going to look at today offer this kind of experience where the students are in control of the technology. The second thing to consider to move up the matrix is that the technology must support students' knowledge construction. And so this includes asking yourself, are the students constructing knowledge? Are they applying critical thinking that goes beyond just simple knowledge reproduction? Are the students generating ideas and understandings that are new to them? This is where your lesson design and your lesson planning is crucial because again, the tools alone cannot guarantee that your students are using technology to construct knowledge and think critically. This is where how you design the task becomes very important. As you can see, when we move up to the third element, the word supports is now replaced with the word required. And then, of course, the goal would be to reach the top of the matrix in which all of the previous three elements would be met in order to get up to this last level. And here you see that the students are designers of a technology product. So the students are using technology in a way to design a product that helps share their knowledge. If you can answer yes to all four of these criteria, then you have done an excellent job at leveraging 
and um, allowing students the opportunity to use technology for learning. All right, our next one, knowledge construction. We talked about this a little bit in our previous dimension with um, using technology for learning. So here, um, the beginning point is that students are constructing knowledge when they apply critical thinking that goes beyond simple knowledge reproduction by generating ideas and understandings that are new to them. So we talked about this. This first criteria that must be met requires some, so the keyword here is some knowledge construction. Students um, are using the tools and resources in a way that allow them to, to build knowledge beyond that simple reproduction of facts and information. So some of our digital reading tools that we're going to look at today allow students opportunities to, to really read and engage with digital online text and information in ways that can help them learn and um, in ways that support more deep comprehension of the material. As we move up, we see that the next criteria is that it's the knowledge construction is the main purpose. And again, this is all about lesson design. The tools alone cannot help you achieve these. Let's move up the matrix even more. Here we see that students are required to apply knowledge in a new context. So, for example, if your students were required to read online digital text to build their knowledge about energy and the different types of energy waves, and then to take that a step further and ask students to apply what they've learned about energy in a new context, you may ask them to apply it to a specific study of uh, a specific earthquake and apply what they've learned about energy to the context of, of earthquakes. And then finally, the highest level is that the learning activity is interdisciplinary. So for an example, uh, would might be if an English teacher and a science teacher work together and they were both incorporating standards from both their subject areas into the learning experience, then it would meet that final criteria. So again, um, remembering that not every activity or lesson that you do will be able to meet all the different elements, but the key is being aware of the dimensions and, and their criteria as you're planning and making sure that you're taking advantage of different opportunities of where you can modify your lesson plan or design in order to, to help maximize those opportunities for student-centered 21st century learning. So that's your goal. So sometimes teachers uh, might feel overwhelmed, and you may feel this way as well, um, because you have a lot of uh, different demands. And so you may feel, how are you able to meet all the demands as well as these considerations that we're talking about with 21st century learning? And so it's important that we note that the standards in the Nevada Academic Content Standards and Common Core they don't compete with these 21st century competencies. Instead, they work hand in hand and they support each other. I'm going to go ahead and read you a statement that is directly from the standards that really helps drive this point across. So to begin, I will quote, students need to employ technology thoughtfully to enhance reading, writing, speaking, listening, and language use. They tailor their searches online to acquire useful information efficiently, and they integrate what they are learning using technology with what they learn offline. They are familiar with the strengths and limitations of various technological tools and mediums and can select those best suited to their communication goals." End quote. So that 
basically sums it up that they are not competing, they support each other, the standards state that students need to be able to use technology in ways that support their knowledge construction, which is exactly what the goal of 21st century learning is. Um, students need to be able to understand which tools, which tech tools can help them reach their learning goals. And so as we go through today's learning experience, you will get exposure to many different digital reading tools that can offer students um, experience, experiences that can help them choose the right tool for the job and help them utilize tools to help them um, use these skills to learn more, more information with what they're, they're reading online. So to go ahead and get started, um, let's look at digital tools for close reading. And we see on the screen now one of the standards. Read closely to determine what the text says. And you can read the rest of that. So this can take on a new meaning when we're, we're reading information closely online or in digital format. Many teachers and students are comfortable with doing close reading in a more traditional environment and they may not understand or have the experience to know how to transfer those skills into a digital environment and that's what we're going to look at now. So why do we want to allow our kids opportunities to engage in digital reading. Um, a couple reasons that you might consider our development of reading stamina. More and more in this digital age, there's so much information online. And so students need to develop stamina for reading in a variety of environments, including online. It offers them the opportunity to continue practicing those close reading skills that they've practiced on paper but transferring them to a digital environment which in turn can help them um, navigate and become comfortable with these types of these types of tasks that might be embedded into computerized exams and again it offers them practice with the essential skills that we want that we're trying to develop with students making sure that they can read text no matter which type it is traditional paper or digital um, and take those close reading skills practice answering text dependent questions and identifying text evidence to support their answers you can still practice the same strategies um, to build these skills in students that we would the same things that we'd want them to do with print So to begin, we'll look at some examples that you could do with particularly younger students. It doesn't mean that you can't do them with older students, but we're going to concentrate on younger students first. Here's a picture of a poster, a little chart that um, gives examples of simple instructions that elementary students might use as they're closely reading and some of the annotations that they might use on a traditional um, printed text. So you could see you may want your students to do things like circle, words or phrases that are confusing, underline major points, and um, identify examples of evidence along with annotating in the margin and writing questions. These are things that you can still do in a digital environment and that's what we're going to look at. Here is a matrix um, created by the teachers at Sarah Winnemucca Elementary that identifies a vertical alignment of text annotation from kindergarten to sixth grade. And as you look at this, you can see how the tasks um, become a little bit more difficult. Some of the annotation tasks that you would expect students to do might be sticky notes using sticky notes. You might ask students to highlight and underline and circle. 
evidence, exam for example, and even um, pictures, drawing pictures of key ideas and vocabulary. So how could you do this in a digital environment? This is what we're going to look at. All right. So what we see on the screen right now is, is an example of what a close digital read might look like in an elementary classroom. The tool that is used in this example is called EduCreations, and it can be found at educreations.com. This tool is nice because it's accessible on iPads and computers, so it's more of a, a device agnostic tool. It has the ability to record digital ink annotations, as you can see on the image on the screen. So the student can draw pictures, they can write in the margin, they can use different colored ink. But one thing that you're not able to see just from looking at the picture is the ability to record the voice in it as well. So this helps us encourage students to practice their metacognition skills or their thinking about thinking. And it can all be recorded and it's a great tool that helps make their thinking visible. So we're going to allow you to look at an example to kind of get an idea of how this might a finished product might look. I want you to think about um, as you're viewing the example how you could use this in your own classroom for a reading experience. Again, this is a tool that is easy and intuitive enough for younger students, but could also very easily be used with older students as well. And then what we will do is we'll do a quick demonstration. Okay, so here you can see that we're in EduCreations. And this is a free account, so it's very nice. You're able to set up a free teacher account. And I'm actually demonstrating this on a computer, but your interface looks very similar on an iPad as well. You've got your white screen here in the middle. You've got your choice of digital ink at the top. You have a eraser. You have your record button. And down at the bottom, you also have the ability to, let me shrink this up a little bit, to import images and add multiple pages. When I click the record button, it will be recording my voice as well. So one question um, that you may be having is, well, how do I get the digital text into this program? So there's lots of different sources out there for digital text, and you may have some that you use already. And we will explore some as we continue through this, this presentation. But one that I'm going to use as a demonstration is a tool called Lit2Go, which offers lots of different um, digital text and it's a really great uh, source that allows you to have access to PDFs of different text, audio, it will um, categorize it by readability and give you the word counts as well. So for this example um, we're looking at Casey at Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. You can see if I wanted I have access to all of that one way that you can easily bring in digital text is to simply do a screenshot. So if you have a screenshot tool loaded on your computer, one that I like to use is Jing, J-I-N-G. It's a free tool and what it allows me to do is take screenshots. So if we wanted to take a closer look at this paragraph, you can see I'm taking a screenshot of it. I'm going to save it onto my desktop, somewhere where I know where it's at. 
and then I am going to go back to Educreations and demonstrate how I would bring this text in. So at the bottom, if I click on my image, I can choose the image that I want to import. And then you can see it says opening. It might take a minute here. But then my text comes in. Now I can um, assign this to a student to annotate. The student could again use all the tools that they would generally use on a in a print environment. They can annotate up in the margins and so forth. Again, what really adds value to using a tool like this is the ability to actually record your voice. So right now it's not only recording what I'm drawing on the screen, but it's also recording my voice. Okay, so when I'm done, I can actually save it. I can preview it. Adds value to using a tool like this is the ability to actually record your voice. So right now, it's not only recording what I'm drawing on the screen. Okay, so you can see that was relatively easy. Um, all I had to do was take a screenshot of the text import it in and then it's ready. This is something you could also teach your students how to do. You model the skill once or twice and then they could actually um, learn how to import their own text. So the Lit2Go is a great resource. Um, if you just Google Lit2Go as you can see it on the screen, um, you can see that it's a free collection. It, like I said before, gives you stories and poems in audio format. And it also gives you PDFs. Um, and there are some, some reading strategies identified for teachers as well. So it's a great resource. Another way um, that some students and teachers like to bring in digital text is to just simply, if you have a cell phone or smartphone, take a picture. And you could be a piece of paper sitting on your desk with the text that you want to bring in. Go ahead and snap a picture with it. And then you have it in digital form ready to import into Educreations. So it's a, a pretty easy thing to, to do. All of these um, digital text sources that we're going to look at today could all be utilized in the same way by using the screenshot method. Okay, so our next close reading digital tool is called Padlet. You may have had experience with it. It used to be called Wallwisher. They changed the name to Padlet, and this tool can be accessed at padlet.com. Here, you could use this as like a digital online board. Um, you may have used big giant poster papers for parking lots, and students use actual sticky notes to put their thoughts or ideas or evidence up on a poster paper parking lot. Well, Padlet kind of serves the same purpose in a digital environment. So um, it's like a virtual sticky note digital board. One way that you could use this to support close reading is to put up a Padlet and require students to share evidence from text that they've read. So let's go ahead and look at an example Padlet wall. So here you can see as the teacher I have um, created a wall called text evidence and I have given my students the directions to share their evidence to the following questions. This is something that I could do in class or it could be something that they do on their own outside of class. If it's outside of class, one thing that you can do as a teacher is if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can moderate and approve anything that is uh, entered into a pa onto a Padlet wall before it goes live. Um, so he, you can see I've put the questions at the top. Where is Captain Charles Moore writing from and how do you know? And then there's another one that you can read off to the side. 
if I were the student and I was ready to actually put my text evidence up on this Padlet wall, I would basically go to the address that the teacher provided. So up here at the top, so up here at the top you can see I've got my Padlet um, address that I could post online for students or have them write it down. When the student goes to the wall, they simply double click or on an iPad double tap their finger. Um, they write their name and then they can add their evidence from the text that you've assigned. What really adds value to a tool like this, because you might be thinking, well, they can do this using paper, which is true. Um, but one thing that, that really adds more value and helps students build deeper meaning and connections is the ability to add links. So they can add images, videos, maps, slideshows, or documents. Okay, so in this question, where is Captain Charles Moore writing from and how do you know they could post their evidence and then they could maybe even go out and look on a map and add that to the wall as well. Or they could add a link to a Google Earth image or something that really will help them um, build more connections to that text. Um, they could upload a file or they could use their webcam as well. And then you can see um, after it's up there, um, it, it can be freely moved around and then you as the teacher have the ability to delete anything that you want as well. So a really very easy tool to use that doesn't take really any training. Um, it's very simple to use. Let me show you how to set one up. And then I will ask you to go out and explore as well. So on Padlet.com, you're able to set up an account. You can see here at the top, you can quickly access all of the Padlets that you've made by clicking on the Padlet link on the toolbar. Over here, you can click on the plus sign and that's one way that you can quickly get to create a new Padlet. So here's another interesting way that you can also create a new wall. So I've got my blank wall. Now I'm ready to modify it. So I'm going to click on modify wall. Up here I can add an, a little image if I want or my own image. And then I'm going to get it to give it a title. And then I'm going to add my instructions for students. I can change my background wallpaper if I want. Probably, I personally don't like it to get too busy looking, so I like the more simplistic type backgrounds. Okay, so you can do that as well. Um, you can choose different layout, whether you want it free form, whether you want them to stream one under the other, or a grid. You can control your privacy, so if you want to invite people, if you want it to be password protected, whether you want it totally public or hidden. How people will find your wall, so there's the current address or you can make it specialized as well. And let's see, and then one thing I forgot to point out under the privacy tab is down here. This is one that teachers sometimes like, especially at the very beginning when you're getting your students used to using digital tools, is the ability to moderate, which would require you to approve them before they go live. And that's pretty much it. It's that simple to make a wall. Okay, so we've looked at some tools that are easy enough for elementary and younger students to use. Does not mean that they, I'm not recommending them for older students because I think they'd work beautifully for older students as well. Let's look at some tools that um, same token are generally more robust type tools that, that would be more appealing to secondary students, but does not mean that they may not have a place or purpose in in elementary classrooms as well.
Okay, so now you can see that at the secondary level you have annotations that have evolved and become very complex in many cases. Students are using margins, they're using different colors, symbols, um, they're doing many different types of annotations to help them make meaning of what they're reading. And again, just like we explored before, these are the same skills that can very easily be transferred to a digital environment. One of the tools that we're going to look at shortly is called Digo, and this is a tool that allows users to not only bookmark online sites, but they can also annotate freely with digital markup tools. And what adds value beyond doing this the traditional way is that it allows you to share your annotations and bookmarks with your classmates and your teacher. So let's go ahead and check this out and see what it would look like. To begin, I'm going to ask that you watch a little video that introduces you to Digo. And as you're watching the video, I want you to think about how a tool like Digo could be used by you to help deepen student understanding while they are reading digital text. And what are some of the added benefits that add value compared to just doing things the same old way with traditional pen and paper? How do you think your students would take to using a tool like this? So here I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the Digo tool. I'm on a website and I've chosen an article that I want to demonstrate with called The Secret of the Arches, which is found on a site youngzine.org. Up here I've already installed a Digolet tool and when I click on that you can see that I have the ability to click on annotate. When I do that my little annotation toolbar pops up on the side and I have the option to highlight. So I can highlight and I can choose what color I want it highlighted. I can add a sticky note. And I can share those sticky notes to a group or I can keep them private. So I can add my um, thinking onto a post-it note. And again, choose whether I want that kept just for me, for my own understanding, or if it's something that I wanted to share with a group. And then as I'm navigating through um, my article, I could choose to keep track of my annotations. So if I click on this very last button, it would keep track of everything that I've done and I could copy that and then paste it into another environment if I wanted. But as you can see here, um, there's my sticky note. It posted. And I chose to share that one to a group, so it's designated as group. And this is an easy way for me to navigate through. And as you can see, digital reading is not linear. Um, it is generally multimodal, so students are required to read not only text, but there's rich images, there might be videos embedded, there might be hyperlinks that they um, are expected to possibly go visit um, and then find their way back to the original reading, so that it is an environment that students need practice with. And giving them opportunities to to digitally annotate as they are close to reading are excellent skills that can support them throughout their whole life. So we've looked at some different ways that we can use digital tools to support close reading in digital environments. Now let's look at some different text resources that you could take advantage of. So the first site that we're going to look at is called News ELA, and this is a source of digital nonfiction text. It can be highly relevant to students because it's based on daily news. Uh, teachers can register for a free account and set up a class. The different abilities of what you're able to do with your class account depends on whether you upgrade to a pro account, but you can still do quite a bit with a free account as well.
So as you can see on the screenshot on the screen, um, some of the highlights of this type of nonfiction um, text is that it's it's available at different Lexile levels. So as you open up an article, you can see it's available at five different reading levels. Um, you can, at the top, um, you can see that they do have a little toolbar um, that allows you to kind of browse through and filter by subjects and topics. In just a moment, I'm going to actually go to the site and show you what it looks like online. Sometimes they have quizzes that are associated with the article. This one doesn't have a quiz, but many of them do. And then your students have the ability to, um, to complete the quiz if you would like them to do that. When students are logged in, they see if you've assigned them anything. Um, and they can also earn points toward badges for completing different tasks, so students like that as well. If you decide to upgrade to a paid account, um, the main difference is that the Pro account provides you with more data tracking. Uh, it, it gives you access to a class dashboard that allows you to track more data. Uh, the free account will still allow you access to daily articles at the five different reading levels and the ability for students to take quizzes. Uh, but to, for more information, you may want to go and compare the features at the site. Let's go ahead and look at that site. Um, okay, so here we are at newsela.com. You can see that navigation bar I was speaking out at the beginning where you can use the search tool to actually type in topics. You can filter by grade level. Notice that it starts at third grade, but goes all the way up to 11, 12. You can also search by reading standard. And you can search for quizzed articles only if you prefer. Or you could just browse. So I'll just randomly click on one just to show you. So we're under the money category. I can see which date um, these news articles have been released. So SeaWorld, let's go ahead and look at this one when I click on it. see that I can actually assign it to a binder if I upgrade to Pro um, and that binder will show up for when my students log in. doesn't mean I can't still use the text without, which is nice. As you see, it's a nice clean interface. There's really not any distractions on the side. I can toggle by uh, using the little slider to adjust the reading level. I can print it out, or um, remember what we talked about before, actually just using your screenshot tool and bringing it into another um, interface to read. So very nice tool that allows you free access to some leveled reading materials on a variety of different relevant topics. Um, and many of them have quizzes. Let me see if I can find one. Let's see. We can always just do a search for quiz. This one um, has an actual light bulb next to it that um, identifies some, some of the different anchors. Let's see if this one has a quiz. All right, so here's one that actually has a quiz. So um, I'm under the 730 Lexile and you can see it has four different quiz questions. So that's something that you can look at as well. So an excellent resource that you can utilize. All right, our next source that we're going to look at is called Think Circa. This is another online site that offers teachers free accounts and access to a library of leveled informational texts. You can get a free teacher account and then you can create classes. It gives you a nice little code that you can have generated and provide to your students. And once they sign up using that code, they have access to the readings or texts that you've assigned them. The texts are organized by grade level. And once it has been assigned, they will see it, students will see it appear in their account. When they open up the rating assignment, they're able to see some uh, assessment activities, some assessment questions that, for them to complete. 
They can also listen to it in a recorded version, which is a great um, tool for struggling readers. And it will also highlight key vocabulary, and students can click on these words um, to get assistance with their vocabulary. I'd like you to get an overview by watching a video introduction and thinking about what, what features you find the most valuable with this resource. And then we'll do a quick online demo. So here we see the Think Circa website. I have created a teacher account already. As you can see, I'm logged in. And I can always look at student view just by clicking on my drop down menu. Over here you can see I've created a class and there's the class code. That's the class code I would give my students to actually become students in that class. So let's look around here. Um, we've got a little filter tool at the top. So it starts at grade band 4 or 5, goes up to 11, 12. When I click on viewing 11, 12, I'm able to see some of the topics. And what I like about this site is it gives students exposure to text in different formats. So here's a perfect example of that. It, it In this example, you see an infographic. And this is a, a skill that our students are going to need practice with, viewing information in a variety of different formats, not just traditional plain linear text. Being able to navigate information in infographic um, is a great skill for students to have. So here you can see um, I can view the full lesson if I would like. Um, there's my infographic and I can see the questions that go along with it. I can click on the vocab link as well to see which vocab um, supports are available. Okay, so let me go back and find a different example. That one was a nice infographic. Here's a, a TED Talk. So you can see um, students are practicing their, their listening skills as well. Again, getting practice with building knowledge um, from a variety of different sources. Here's one that's text, but you can see at the top I can play um, the audio of it. Here's my text. When I click on the word dystopian, for example, it gives me the definition. And here I can go back and look at some vocabulary as well. If I like it, I can assign it. Over here now, off to the side, I can see my class. I can see what I'm assigning. I can assign it to the entire class or individual students, assign a due date, and then click Submit. You can also see what um, active or past assignments that I have. So really incredible resource um, for students. All right, the next one that I'd like to introduce you to is called Curriculet. This is another amazing site. It also allows teachers to set up free accounts and have their students self-enroll. Once you're logged in, you have access to a store uh, with many different types of text. And what I like about this site is that you can also upload your own documents. This is a really nice advantage. When you assign an article or a book to students, you can edit the curriculet, and um, that's what they call it, a curriculet. You can add interactives, like multiple choice, short answer, even annotations, videos, and images. So all of these are ways that you can help students engage more deeply with the text. On the student end, when they log in, they click on a My Homework tab to see their reading assignments, and they have a tracker that can help keep track of their reading time and their total correct answers on the interactives.
As they progress through the text, they can select different um, words and get definitions, and they can also add their own annotations. So to begin, let's watch a introductory video. All right, so here you can see um, we're going to explore Curriculet online, give you a quick demonstration. I am logged in, so I have an account. I'm logged in, um, and I can get access to a quick demo over here. Um, and that's something I'd like you to explore on your own. I can click on my settings if I needed to, or my class manager. As I briefly mentioned before, you have access to a library, which are, it exists um, mainly of things that I've already added. Let me go back here. I have access to a store, which is where I choose content to be added to my library. So my internet's running a little slow, but it's going to get there. So here's my getting started on um, Curriculate video. So you can see over here I've got in my store, I have a search bar. I have all kinds of different categories. Ready to use, history, drama, poetry, everything from third grade on up to 11, 12, read works, and even in Spanish. So let's just go ahead and look under short fiction. Let's say I wanted to add Gift of the Magi. I simply click on it and it has been added to my library. There, I, there it goes. So you can see that this Gift of the Magi um, curriculet, I have some different options here. I have um, standards focused for 9th and 10th grade. So this has a quiz, some different annotations three to be exact, and some questions. And you can preview it. To kind of see what it looks like before you assign it to students. Okay, this gives you a quick navigation lesson. So I can basically click on the arrows to progress through the pages. I can also navigate by um, clicking on the C in the upper left hand corner which gives me access to the table of contents, search bar, and checkpoints. And this is what I really love about it is if you select the text and hold for a minute and drag, then you can um, define words, add questions, add annotations, and add quizzes. I can adjust the text size, which is amazing. Nice resource, for, especially for accessibility. Here you can see in this curriculet, um, I've got a, some questions built in on this page. Here I have an annotation which includes a video. So it says, watch this video to learn more about historical references in the Gift of the Magi. So talk about allowing students to really engage deeply and make connections in a variety of different ways with text. You have the ability to do that. The Gift of um, Magi, watch this clip to learn what um, a parable is. And then it asks them a question. So the students actually have to um, address that question. So you can see all the variety of different ways that you can engage with the material. Student view. So it gives you an idea of what it looks like as a student. Same thing, it gives us the instructions. If I am a student, I still have those exact same abilities. Let's see, I've got a question. I can adjust my font size.
and I can click exit when I'm ready to go out. So an excellent tool as well. All right, next we see um, another resource called CK12. There are quite a few different suite of tools available to support teachers and students specifically related to STEM education. In just a moment, I'll give you a little overview of a video to watch about one of their resources called Flexbooks. A Flexbook is a teacher-created um, textbook Students, so teachers have the ability to modify and add specific content, chapters, digital media as they see fit for their students to read and interact with. So I'll let you watch the video to get a better picture of what Flexbooks are. Finally, this might look familiar as we visited it briefly earlier, but this is a site called Young Zine, and it's a unique website where kids can learn about current events, things that are happening around the world, which helps gives them, give them a nice global perspective. It's simple, engaging, and interactive. They, the founders of Young Zine state that their goal is to help parents and educators create a vibrant community of globally aware young citizens. And so their stories are all written with a young audience in mind but they also try to uh, use fun elements like trivia, interesting visuals and videos as well. One thing that they're very proud of is that it's it's meant to be more than just a passive website. It's designed to be a community for kids, parents and teachers. So children are encouraged to express their views and submit articles and book reviews and travel logs and they have an editorial team that moderates on this site. The next resource is called LitPick. LitPick um, is a site that provides free electronic books to students in grades 4 through 12 and students actually take on the role of a book critic so they're able to read the books and develop and post reviews where other students can read them so this is excellent it allows students to to be able to read and write for authentic purposes and authentic audiences so after students become members they can also participate in different uh, threaded discussions that with authors, publishers, and publicists, and parents who are interested in young adult literature. So go ahead and head on over to litpick.com and explore that site. So as you can see, there's just tons of different ideas. Um, all of the resources that I've spoke about in this webinar can be found on our Pinterest board. And so I urge you to to use utilize that site and go there to get all the links and resources that we've referenced. Also I'd like you to take a moment to read the disclaimer. You can go ahead and pause it if you need more time. And to end, I'd like to thank you for your time. I'm on Twitter and I host a blog where I like to share ed tech ideas. Um, so thank you for your time and I hope that you were able to find some valuable resources and information to help you support reading in the 21st century.